monitor review time and Samsung? What's Samsung doing on my desk? Well, before we get to it over on the test bench, it's a little bit of introduction. This is a 32 inch 4K Samsung panel. It is widely available and it's relatively inexpensive. I couldn't resist, I had to take a look at it. But you should know this, this is the Samsung U28D 590D. This monitor, it's like five years old. I bought both of these monitors, but this Samsung 4K monitor was one of the most disappointing monitors that I ever purchased. And this is when it became clear to me that certain types of reviews really do make more sense to do in video than the written form. Because I looked at the written review for the U28D 590D and on paper, it looks pretty good. It looks, there's not really a lot of difference between these two displays, TN panel, 4K, 27 inch versus 32 inch, but they're night and day different monitors. This one, I hate, but well, I hate this one. We'll talk about them both and we'll talk about monitor testing method methodology. And this is really just like a baseline. Like we can even get more fancy with monitor testing, but for productivity and different kinds of uses, I mean, depending on what you wanna do, yeah, I'm, let's get to it. Look, we, we have the tools now. We can actually do this. This is why it's so important to do this in video. I've got the Leo Bodnar latency tester. Yeah, look at that. Even before it starts to display something, it's like, 25, 30 milliseconds behind. Something crazy like that, yeah, 25 milliseconds. So it takes, it's 1 60th of a second is 16 milliseconds. So the fact that this thing takes 39 milliseconds to display one frame is crazy. It's like two frames behind. It's almost two frames behind when it starts displaying the frame because the, the 1 60th of a second from top to bottom takes 16 milliseconds at a 60 hertz display. And, uh, I don't think we have, I mean, the other testing that we do where it's like chase of squares and things like that, this panel responds so slowly. It's crazy for a TN panel, even of the day, even for five-year-old panels. Cause I was importing panels from Korea, like cheap crappy panels from Korea that were cheap. And that was really it. Like it was just, you know, an interface converter strapped to an LCD. And that's what blew me away. Cause it's like, all right, I can finally afford Samsung. Like Samsung, the flagship monitor. This monitor is actually crap. And because this monitor is crap, that is why it is so important that we run through the test regimen in video of what the monitor capabilities are. This is the first Samsung purchase. That I've had in a coon's age. This is the Samsung UJ59, or if you prefer, the U32J590U. I feel like it's cursed just having 590 in the name. Let's see how it stacks up. So I'm really anxious to see if Samsung has upped their game because this monitor is a 4K monitor. It's 32 inches, it's super cheap. I really think 32 inches and 4K is the sweet spot because you can run this monitor with 100% scaling and it's basically fine. Now, one pro tip for unpacking this monitor, I actually got a few of these, is to open it from the wrong side. Like most other Samsung monitors, it comes with an external power brick, but to work on power strips, the actual plug system will rotate. So you can plug it in like this or like this, depending on what your power strip desires, like what, what would be the most efficient way to do that? So it's an improvement over the power plug of its older sibling. I like using Spaceco monitor arms. They're very good. They're kind of expensive, but it's like a 20 year item. Like you buy it and you never need to buy it again as long as the Visa standard stays in vogue. It's always gonna work. This monitor, U28D590D, there's no Visa mount. It's terrible, it's a terrible situation. Why would you have a monitor in this day and age with no Visa mount? Good news though, this one does. This one has a 100 millimeter Visa mount, works great with Space Co. Including the Fancy Pants Crescent monitor arm mount. The great thing about this Crescent is that it's designed for holding up to three monitors. I'm gonna have two of these on it, no big deal. But it'll hold up to three and you can space them out however you want and it'll hold pretty heavy monitors as well. The layout here at the rear of the monitor is pretty good. There's the Visa mount, which is a little more toward the bottom of the monitor than perfectly centered in the monitor. You get this breather vent at the top and this lovely recessed cable area over here on the side. 
for hiding your cables. Now, also in the box is this weird sticker thing that's in the documentation that's labeled hole cover. And you can use this to cover the hole for the stand if you're not gonna use the stand. And uh, I actually used it to cover the cable hole. So, yeah. Now one cool thing about this monitor is that it does support picture by picture, meaning you can have two inputs side by side. The uncool thing about this monitor is that it has one display port and two HDMI, so there's not four inputs. So you're not gonna be running four 1080p inputs on this monitor in four quadrants, which would be a nice feature, but it's not here. Of course, it's not here. It's In fact, the connections are pretty much the same, except there is also a headphone connector here. So, yeah. Now, sometimes these monitors have a game mode where you can put it in game mode and get a little bit better response time or colors or whatever. The U28D590D, the old monitor, the old 27 inch monitor, has a game mode. It's garbage. The game mode on the old monitor doesn't do anything to improve the latency or anything like that or overdrive or, or any of that stuff. It actually just makes it uh, have higher contrast. So it's pretty dumb. The interface system for this monitor is a five-way joystick in this corner of the monitor. So you reach your hand around behind the display and then you have a four-way joystick that with a button that you push and that's how you control this monitor. I've pushed the button and nothing has happened. I've pushed the button again and now I'm flailing about fondling the button, if you will. All right, see this monitor immediately is already a much more reasonable five milliseconds, not 25. In terms of real, actual, measured latency on this panel, it's somewhere between six and 10 milliseconds, it looks like, from the high-speed footage. The way you figure that out is you run the high-speed camera at like 180 FPS and 240 FPS, and sort of look at the situations where you have two boxes on side by side. They're not gonna be on the same amount. One's gonna be, you know, sort of fading out, or another one's gonna be flipping on. It's really strange, on this panel, it looks like there's a little bit of a green tint to it. Now this is in the uncalibrated state. The calibrated state had it look a little more like I expect. So I think the out of the box color calibration on these is gonna be a little all over the place. This new monitor also supports FreeSync. So if you're running a game and you wanna run FreeSync, you can totally do that. The FreeSync range on the monitor is a little limited at 4K 60 Hertz. It's gonna run from about 44 Hertz, 45 Hertz. It advertises 42, but you really wanna run like 45 to 60 at 4K. Uh, the range is a little wider at lower resolutions, but again, it all tops out at, at 60. You can do some manual overclocking with this monitor, but I'm not gonna recommend that. That is gonna vary from monitor to monitor, but you can push it a little past 60 Hertz, especially at lower resolutions. In terms of color accuracy and color calibration, well, I mean, this isn't exactly a top shelf panel either. Certainly this TN panel, like, even for a five-year-old TN panel, this was a particularly poor example of TN panels in my, you know, in my estimation for the day. I mean, look at some of the TN panels we've had from other brands like Pixio. They actually look pretty good, and the color calibration is not completely awful. Whereas, you know, the older Samsung monitor, it's got 10-bit color. That's something Samsung did. That's like pulsing the pixels on and off. It's not really truly 10-bit color. That's something else from the Tom's Hardware review where it's like, eh, 10-bit color. No, forget it. This monitor also, the newer one, doesn't really have 10-bit color. It's just pulsing the pixels on and off, but it's much better, it's worlds better in terms of color reproduction. And with our color calibration thing, you can download the profile for this monitor if you want. Again, it's not awful for a monitor of this day. There are better monitors, there are pro art monitors, but the Samsung monitor right now is the value proposition. You can pick up this monitor right now for anywhere from three to $400 depending and I think it, that like 350 and below in Q3 of 2019 that's a pretty good deal like 320 330 350 for what you get 32 inches 4k 60 Hertz free sync three inputs two HDMI one display port headphone out and the visa mount that's a pretty good price in this market so overall the verdict on Samsung B plus uh, if the U28D590D is an F minus, maybe an F plus, this monitor is probably B, B minus, B plus, B, B plus, I think. Ooh, they're trying. I'm Little, this is level one. This has been a level one monitor review. If you want to download the color calibration profile, there's a link. I didn't do it. 
There's a link to the color calibration profile below. It's a link to the forum. You can get some more information on that. And you can see some of our other testing that we did on screen. I didn't really talk about it all. And you can also kind of get some, like, be sure that, you know, some of, if you just skip through the video and you're looking at some of the B-roll, it's gonna be like, ah, oh, you might be looking at U28D 590D video just so that you've got some comparison. I mean, they may have 590 in the name, but they're otherwise completely unrelated monitors. This is a decent monitor. Plus also, I really like my Space Co setup. Getting this thing set up on the Space Co monitor arm, the giant crescent monitor arm, that's nice. It's really nice. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Welcome, I'll see you in the forums.